I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. This Photoshop Elements video is about a plugin called Elements Plus, and you can see it over here on the right hand side. Now, before I get into this discussion of Elements Plus, I just want to make a little disclaimer here. I don't work for Elements Plus, I wasn't paid to do this video, I'm not an affiliate. I won't make any money if anybody buys this thing. I just happen to like this product and I wanted you to know about it. I bought it just like you would, went over there, paid the price, downloaded it, installed it, and here's what I found about this interesting plugin. Okay, first off, let me just bring up the website for this. Here we go, it's at elementsplus.net. A lot of information in here about this. The basic concept behind Elements Plus is that there are a lot of functions inside of Photoshop Elements that are taken from Photoshop, but we're only given access to parts of those processes, parts of those techniques and tools. The rest of it is hidden inside of Elements. It's still there, but it's not accessible because of the tools and limitations and tools. And I'll show you examples of those in this video. As far as the cost on this, there is a download demo. You can download this. Notice that there are different versions for all the different versions of Photoshop Elements, Windows, and Mac on the right hand side there. And the demo is a limited version demo, but it does show you how the program runs and how it's installed and so forth. It's well worth the time to do that. Now, as far as the actual cost, it really is amazingly cheap for, for what it does. If I switch over here so we can find where the cost is here, you can see it right there. $12 for this plugin. It, it, it's really a cheap, inexpensive plugin. So there it is. That's what it is, elementsplus.net. Let's now take a look at this and see what it's all about. What this does is it installs a set of tools over here. Notice I'm in the Effects tab, Effects panel on the right-hand side, and this comes in as a new section in the Effects tab. Here's the normal stuff here, Fade of Photo, Glow, Monotone, Color, Painting Panels. This is all your regular stuff. And then Elements Plus has been added into that list. You'll also find this up underneath the Actions. Right here, there's the Elements Plus Actions. Now if you have installed this and you're not seeing it in the Actions, just go up to the little, little button right there and click on Elements Plus and that will bring it up and, and show it. Okay, so here's what this does. We have sections for color and tone. That's that one. For selections, that's right there. Working with layers, that's right over here. Styles, that's there. Masks, smart filters. There's your masks and your smart filters. Paths, text, and script. Paths, text, and script. Now, let's just start off with a quick demonstration here. I'll click on this, and there we go, the color and tone section. This is everything that's underneath this one button. Now there's a lot of things in here as you can see. Curves, auto curves, color balance, black and white exposure, vibrance, selective color, color lookup, channel mixer, soft proof, split channels. A lot of great tools in here. Some of these things like the color lookup, you can't find that anywhere, even anything vaguely like this inside of Photoshop Elements, but it's a main tool over in Photoshop. Left hand side we can work in RGB or just the red channel. Adjust color curves, soft proof, split channels, or green or blue. So I work on individual channels this way with these three tools. Or work on all of our RGB. Now to show you the differences in here, let's look at our curves option right there. And let's first look at the one that comes with Photoshop Elements. Let me close this down. And I'll use this picture over here. So Enhance, adjust color, adjust color curves. Now this actually doesn't adjust the color at all. This adjusts the lighting really. So this really should be under lighting, but that doesn't matter. So adjust color curves. We'll bring this up and here's the control for this. Now we have some 
presets on the left hand side here. I can use these to kind of preset this image. Notice how none of these work out very well on this picture. My problems obviously is that the whole picture is way too dark. On the right hand side I have this slider control here, these little controls and the slider controls. If I click on one of our styles, notice how it controls or adjusts these positions. Now going from top to the bottom, adjust highlights, that moves the right hand side, you know, one in. Midtone brightness is the up and down position of this one. Midtone contrast, left and right adjustment of this one, and then adjust shadows is this one down here. Let's see how much I can do on this picture using this control here. Also down below the want total color control. This is simply an add down here for Photoshop CC. Some of these new tools in Photoshop C Elements 15 have these ads for Photoshop CC in them. I don't really approve of that, but there you go. Okay, let's put the adjust shadows clear to the right hand side. Doesn't do much. It's a little bit, but not much. Let's see if we can increase the contrast just a bit, increase our midtone brightness. That's about as much as I can really do here with this control because of these limited controls in here. Notice I can't do the pure blacks, I can't do anything with the pure whites. So those are not controllable with this control. And not too much as you can see in there. I'll choose OK. It's not too much. It's just it's OK. It brings up the colors a little bit but not too much. Let's just undo that. Let's now go back here. I'll bring back up this control. This is the Elements Plus control. Here's the curves in Elements Plus. Now again, this is using the same features that are inside of Elements already. It just adds in the Photoshop control on top of that. So let's click on the green check mark. This will bring up that tool. Also notice here that this comes in as a layer. So it's an adjustment layer. Choose OK. There we go. So here's our control, a different kind of a control. I don't have those little windows to look at, as you can see, but I have this control here. We have our presets right there. If you want to use your presets, you can just go ahead and look at those. There's an auto adjustment. You can click on this. It will then make its own best choice in there. Or you can actually grab control handles on this line on this one. Right now we're looking at just the light values, 0 to 255, or I can bring up the pigment ink values in here. So you can look at this in different ways. And I can bring in scale lines in there if you want to, so no scale lines or, or smaller scale lines. Channel overlays, histogram, that's this thing going on in here and so forth. Okay, now to look at this picture here, over in the Photoshop Elements version of this, we had a control right here. If I just click on this, that gives me control right there. There was a control there, there was a control there, and there was a control here. So this now is set up the same way that it was over in the Elements version of the control. I can't use slider tools here, but I can actually grab the controls and move these by hand. Now the importance here is that I have the ability to move the bottom left and the top right. I'll grab the bottom left and I'll pull that one up. And you see that really lightens up the blacks in there. So I can go, you know, way too light or just a little. I'm going to pull it up just a little bit and use this to lighten up the blacks. That's one thing which I couldn't do right there inside of the elements control. Now if I pull up this, I can even move this control further over to the left so I can take this, this position here move it into the, my blacks. So you have a lot of blacks right in here. That's my histogram. I can now lighten up that part of the image. In the elements, I was lightening up this part of the image, but now I can lighten up that part just by sliding that over. Here's my midtones. I can adjust the midtones. There we go. And I can control my other values in here. I don't want the midtones to get burned out, so I'll pull the whites down a little bit. Again, something else which I can't do using the controls inside of what's normally available in Photoshop Elements. So let's kind of move these around and get just exactly the settings that I want. And I'll lighten the kind of dark mid values up a bit more here. And there you go, a much better, much brighter image 
because I have this different control to work with these settings. It's the same curves settings is just the different control. This is the control actually from Photoshop. So it allows me to use the Photoshop control to come in here and make these kinds of adjustments. I'll just cancel that one out. You see there's the original. Now let's see I can go even further with this using the same controls. Go back up here again. We'll bring this up. This time let's take a look at just the blue channel right down here. Notice in the blue channel here is our adjust color curves again. Just click on that and apply. There we go. Notice it's now kind of a bluish color over here and the line is in blue. This is going to be only adjusting the blues. So this now actually is allowing you to adjust the color curves, which you can't do with the Photoshop Elements interface, but you can do that here. So I can come in and click in the middle here someplace and this just bring our blues up a little bit. Keep everything else about where it was. So I can lighten up or increase the values of the blues in the picture without touching the values of anything else. So it allows you to really focus in and do some actual color adjustment in here using these controls. Or I can come in and do one of these options such as lighten shadows and this lightens the shadows just in the blues range. It doesn't lighten any place else. It just pulls over further into our blues a bit. There we go. So that takes care of some adjustment on just the blue aspect, just the blue channel. Let's go back, bring it up again. One problem here, of course, as you can see, is that we have to do each one of these channels as a separate patch. You can't do them all in the same control at the same time. But let's look at our reds. Just color curves. We'll apply this one. There's our reds. And let's now lighten up the shadows on the reds. Like that's a bit too red at this point now. So I can come in and pull the red midtones back and the highlights back a little bit and push this further in towards the shadow range and see if we can get a better effect here just on the reds. Let me kind of pull these backwards a bit. That's looking pretty good. Maybe a little too much red still in there. But again, I'm controlling just the red aspect of the image and nothing else. So I, I can really focus in on just the part of the image that I want to adjust. In this case, just the red channel. Let's do this one more time. Bring this back up again. Let's go to our green channel now. Adjust color curves and choose OK. And notice we're now looking at just the greens. I'll just put in our standard three controls. And let's see we get a little bit of lightning on the greens in there. Just a touch. And you bring the mid values down, so we're back to kind of a nice shattered white in there. It looks pretty good. Choose OK. So I've kind of color balanced everything now. Let's now go back and do the whole thing. And we'll bring up the darks a little bit. And just kind of lighten up our mid values. So by coming in and being able to control the channels separately, the red, green, and blue channels separately, then the overall values have a much better ability to come in and using the curves control to actually adjust or fix the values of the image. So there it goes. Take a look at our layers. You'll see here just the overall value is remaining as an adjustment. So I can show or hide that. All the colors are just on the background image there. But it does allow you to do that nice color adjustment. So now see again how what this looks like on the original. I'll just revert to the original. Hit revert. And there's the original. So you can see how much of an improvement we got there by using the color curves control in here, especially by being able to separate this control out to the separate channels. Again, something which you can't do using the control that's normally available here inside of Photoshop Elements. We'll bring that one back up again, adjust color curves. And there it is. All I can do is just those minimal adjustments. You can't adjust using the histogram over here or the line. And you can only work on the overall image. You can't work on individual color channels. 
So that's what this plugin does for you. It gives you these controls and these Photoshop level controls for things that you have in Photoshop Elements. Let's just do one more here. Let's do the black and white. I'll close this down. Let's bring up that black and white. So first off, the controls here inside of Elements. Convert to black and white. Here you go. Just like the curves, I have two options. I have some styles over here, just fast options to, to choose. And I can then come down here and adjust for the red, green, blue, and contrast to try to get the best view out of this. Bring up blue helps a lot, as you can see, on the black and white. Pull the reds back a touch. You can see from this also that most of our darkening problem is in the blues. That real darkness is in the blue range. So there you go. That's what I can do with the current control inside of Photoshop Elements. Let's just cancel that. I'll bring this back up again. And we'll look at our black and white tool here and click the apply button. Again, it comes back in as an adjustment layer. And there we go. Let's put this right there, kind of out of our way. And you can see I now have controls for a much wider range of colors. Reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, magentas. With the control that we have available normally in elements, I only had the reds, the greens, and the blues. So this is doubled by number of controls. We still have the drop down options right here. Those are still available, those presets. We also, instead of just brightness, contrast, I have hue and saturation. I can control those separately. Let's now see what we can do with this to improve this. Now I know that I need to bring the blues up. We already saw that before. So bring this up a little bit. Let's bring our cyans up a bit. And let's check our greens. And Magentas doesn't do much. I can leave that alone. You see a little bit of that right in here, but not much. I can leave that one alone. Let's look at our reds. The reds helps bring up some of the buildings. There's a lot of red in the buildings, red and yellow. There we go. So getting much closer to a good look on this image because I have more tools to work with on the left-hand side. So again, this is what you get with this Elements Plus plugin is that you have a different set of controls and these different controls have a lot more available, a lot more refinement available for working on an image. Okay, I'll cancel. Let's just do OK on this and let's take a look at our layers. And again, I wanted to show you over here, these come in as adjustment layers. This is a, a change to black and white as an adjustment layer. And this means that I can show or hide that control right there. Now you can't bring this back up again by double clicking on this like you can with a regular adjustment layer. But at least I can show or hide that right here so I can bring that in and do that kind of additional work. Okay, let's so go back to our styles here. Take a look at our different Elements Plus effects. So that's our first one, color and tone. You can see very, very useful. Lots of great tools in here. The next one over here, let me just move on to a right layer. There we go. Okay. The next one over is the selections. This allows you to work with your selections to a select color range. In other words, selecting it with an eyedropper or a quick mask mode. And again, I can do this on just individual channels as well. So I can do some channel work here. It's not as good as the channels over in the Adobe Photoshop program, but it's much better because we don't have any way to really separate out channels inside of Elements. So this gives you a huge increase here in what your abilities are, what the things you can do. Let's go to our next one here. This is our layers section. Let's bring this up. Here we go. With this on the layers, here's the two different layers in this image, the background image and the black and white control that we did. I can convert this to an embedded object or to a linked object. And that gives me again more control. Either the image is embedded. This, that's the default setting for Photoshop Elements, or I can link to it, which I can't do in Photoshop Elements, basically turning this into a smart object that's linked in to this. Now you can import or place as a smart object, but I can't go back and forth inside of Elements. I don't have that control, but I have that control here with this new plugin. Again, nice little additional option. Let's come down here. This is the Styles section. 
There's all of our normal styles, bevels, complex, drop shadows, glass buttons. I've used the Wow Chrome in a few videos recently using that Wow Chrome shiny edge right there. And that's all that you can do normally is you can just use the use the style. Over here I can do some additional stuff with this. I can rename the style, make a copy of the style and do changes on that style, rename and delete categories. I can also look at the folder, find the folder where this is located. If I have new styles that I want to place into the same folder, you can go ahead and do that as well. So again, it gives you a bit more control over what's available. Now this next one here, this is for working with masks. And at this point, let's move over to our next picture over here. I'm just going to hide that for now. Let's move over to this picture. And I'll zoom in a little bit on this. So one click, there we are. Let's say I wanted to do a mask in here of the hair. I'll do a real fast one. I won't take any real time on this. Let's do a fast mask like that. Let's clean up some of this stuff. That's easy to do. I'll just grab the lasso tool here. Now I want to add this into this mask. So I'll make sure I'm on the add section. I'll just lasso around these parts I want to add in. Again, nothing, nothing dramatic on what I'm doing right now. This is all normal stuff. Just kind of cleaning up this basic mask. And here's basic selection. We'll use the selection to make a mask. There we go. I want to remove that bit and remove this bit. So I'll change over here to subtract. Now let's loop around that. Take that out. Loop around that. Take that out. There we go. Let's now invert our selection. So select and inverse. Pretty standard stuff. You know, we've done this in, in a lot of different videos. Let's go over here to layers and I'll use this to make a layer mask. Here's our layer mask. And the layer mask is just a transparent background. Okay, nothing dramatic yet on that. Let's add in a new layer here. I'll put a new layer behind this and grab the gradient tool. I'll set this at the foreground of background gradient and I'll just drag a gradient across the background like that. Give us a nice gradient. Now in here, we have this bit of highlighting along the edge right there. A lot of ways of cleaning that up, a lot of things you can do on that edge. But one thing you can do if you want to is you can try to feather that out. Now I could have had a bit of feathering on this to begin with if I have my initial tool here set with a feathering number. Normally I do, but I had it set at zero this time. So give me a real rough edge. Normally I'll put, do a little bit of feathering on that. So one thing which I could do if I had my selection still active is I could go in on my mask and adjust the selection using the refine edge tool. Once I have finished using that tool, I can't get back to that inside of Photoshop Elements. I'm kind of out of luck at that point. You could use my trick, which is to use the Gaussian Blur on the edge here. That works out fine. But it'd be nice to be able to get back to the Refine Edge tool, right? Things like that. So let's go to here to our effects. Go click on our masks. Notice that now we can see the mask. We have a mask settings in here, density and feathering on that. We also have show overlay or hide overlay. We can duplicate our layer mask, delete the layer mask. And here's a refine mask edge. Let's click on the check apply right there. And notice that it takes me back into the refine mask. So I have actually have my refine edge tool here brought back in again. I didn't have to redo my selection to get back to this tool. I actually can bring it back up again. Let's change our feathering here. I'll put it to six and choose OK and kind of soften out that edge just like that. So I can bring that tool back up again. Real interesting. Let's do something else. Over in Photoshop, you can use what are called vector masks along with your other masks. So this mask is being used to give me the gradient background and to soften up my edge, a little bit of a glow around the edge like that. Let's say I also wanted to put this inside of an ellipse in here. Hard to do using just that one mask. I'm kind of stuck on that one mask. There are ways of doing it, but it's, you know it's a few steps to get to it. I can do that here though fairly easily. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'll go over and grab the ellipse tool right down here. Let's make sure our settings are correct. I'll set this 
uncheck from center and set this to unconstrained. Now I drag upper left hand corner to bottom right hand corner and that gives me a nice ellipse shape which fills that area. So I have that nice ellipse shape on here. Nothing much I can do about that. I could make a selection, stick it over here, and then paint this out by hand to add in you know, that curve on there. But let's see what we can do over with our mask tools here from Elements Plus. So click on my mask. This is what's called a raster mask, actually. Click on our mask tools. And down here, create vector mask. Over in Photoshop, you're going to have raster masks and vector masks on the same image, on the same layer. You can do that here as well. I'll click on the Reveal All and green check mark. So now go back to our layers. There's our new vector mask. So here's the, the original mask and here's a new vector mask. Now I'll hold the Control key down, go from my shape layer, hold the Control key down and drag this shape down onto my vector mask, replacing that shape with this shape. Notice the color stayed up there, but my shape moved down here to this mask. Let's now hide that and there's that second mask in there. Look at that. So I can actually have two masks going at the same time. One, the raster mask for the background, and two, this vector mask, which gives me that trimmed edge down below. Again, there are ways of doing this using other tools, but this is just kind of a fun thing that you can do here with this Elements Plus. Okay, let's just take a look through and see what else we have available in here, other kind of fun stuff. Go over here to the Smart Filters. And we make sure I'm on a good layer. There are smart filters right there. Go to this layer. Bring this back up so you can see this control. And in here, I can add in filters, any filter from my filter list as a smart filter. Now what this allows you to do is to add your filter in as an adjustment layer, basically. I can then go back and make adjustments later on to that. Let me just cancel this out. And I'll hide that layer right there. And yeah, hide that. There we go. Up on layer, we can put in adjustment layers. And we have invert, threshold, and post rays. These are all from filters, these three right down here. But there are no other filters available under our adjustment layers. So if I apply it to the image, it's applied, and that's it. But all of our, our layers here, all of our filters are available to us as adjustment layers. Let me get back on the right layer again. There we go. So this gives us a huge increase in what we can have and use as an adjustment layer. All of these filters can now be added in as adjustment layers, which means you can go back and show or hide the filter. And you can also go back and change the adjustments later on. So it's, it's again, it's a huge advancement in here on that. Let's just hide that again. There we go, get rid of those. And back to our effects. The next one down here is a tool for working with paths. You can't do a lot with paths here with this tool, but you can do some stuff. You can't do anything with paths normally inside of elements. Any shape you draw is a vector path. So all of our shapes over here, these are technically vector paths that are filled with a color. But we can do some stuff here. We can fill the path or not. I can convert the mask to a path. I can stroke the path. What this is, is putting a, an outline around the path. I can change the path to a selection, save the path, rename the path, deselect the path, delete the path. A few things like converting the path to a selection is an interesting tool that would allow you to make a shape and then convert that shape into a selection. So some fun stuff in here on that. On the type tool down here, working with text, we have text on a path and text on a shape. There's a few things you can do here. Text inside a circle or outside a circle, that's not that difficult. We can do that pretty easily inside of Elements already. Wavy text, you can do, but it gets a bit more difficult. Parabolic up and down, upstairs, upstairs, steeper, downstairs, swirls out, swirls in, counterclockwise and clockwise. Things that you can't do normally inside of Photoshop Elements. Putting text actually follow those shapes, or follow those paths, rather. Now, in shapes, text in a circle, wavy indent, left and right flag, vertical flag, horizontal, diamond shape, triangle, triangle in, triangle out. 
there are ways of getting to this, but again, it's much more difficult than using these fast tools here inside of this new plugin. Again, another really nice, neat feature. And finally, on the right hand side here, we have different things that are called scripts. This is kind of some miscellaneous stuff you know, about Elements Plus, doing things as a batch, setting up Elements Plus options, focus stacking, frequency separation. This is the one I want to show you in here. You have hidden preferences. You can add this to the menus, multi export, script events manager, some shortcuts here, Photoshop shortcuts. But this one, I actually have on YouTube right now a video on how to set up frequency separation on this same picture. And I have a whole video on how to set that up. So you can then use that to go back in and do some retouching. With the elements plus here, I'll just click on that frequency separation, click on the play button, and it's done. Let's look at our layers now. There's our frequency separation. Notice how I grabbed everything down below here, copy that to a new layer, and here's our frequency separation. Textures and details. Details really is your, your color values. So I'll come down here to the image side of the details. There's our color layer. And then using the zoom tool, let's zoom in. And we'll come in down, just down here real tight on this and grabbing the clone stamp tool. There's our clone stamp tool right there. I'll grab some of the color from here, hold the Alt key down, click on that, and I'll place that right over that. And we'll just retouch that spot out. Just like that. Let's do the same thing for right here. Now with frequency separation, notice as I'm cloning it, I'm not losing any of my texture that's in that. I'm just changing the colors in that area. It's a very fast, very easy way to do some really nice retouching, as you can see here. I'm just clone stamping colors from one area onto another area and quickly cleaning up all these blemishes. Now I normally have, when I'm doing this kind of retouch, I have my opacity set fairly low, 63%. The size, of course, whatever the brush size is that you need. Having this set a little bit low helps you do a little smoother job on your, on your retouching. But the important thing here is how fast this Elements Plus set up this section here. Now again, it takes it's pretty quick. It takes a couple of minutes to set this up. Normally, if you didn't have that, and you have to know the right sequence to set up these two layers. For the top layer where it says textures, use this to retouch your textures, like taking texture from this area, adding in more texture down here, things like that. And this one will be working with your color values on your retouch. But it's several steps to get to this point. Inside of this, using the Elements Plus, as you saw, it's one click, and it sets this whole thing up for you right away. So if you're doing a lot of photo retouching, it, it's worth the cost just for that one little bit alone. Okay, so that's kind of, as I said, a fast look through this program. I showed you a few things on this Elements Plus, some of the stuff that it can do. There's a lot more available in here. It's a very, very powerful program, and I tend to use this a lot on my own stuff. I'm staying away from doing any of this any of these tools here in the YouTube videos because I'm trying to keep everything on those YouTube videos, things you can do for free without having to go out and buy anything else like this program. But if you want to go out and purchase a plugin to increase your tools available inside of Photoshop Elements, this is one I would definitely recommend. I mean, it's only $12 right now. It's a real cheap cost. And you've seen now how much this does, how much it adds into the program. You do Photoshop Elements for you and really advancing and increasing the amount of tools available and techniques available to you here inside of the program. And again, let me just give you that disclaimer again. I don't work for Elements Plus. They don't even know who I am. I don't get any money if you buy this thing. I just happen to like this plugin a lot, so I wanted to do a review about this. So there you go. That's a look at this Elements Plus plugin. Let me bring back up that website again one more time so you can see that. And here we go once that window refreshes. There it is, elementsplus.net. Simply go to buy full version. Make sure you scroll down to the version of Photoshop Elements that you own. It has from version 15 down to version 1, 2, and 3 even. They also have it available for the Macintosh as well. 
and right now it's just twelve dollars again it's a for me it, it's an easy easy concept I actually have this installed on two different versions of Photoshop elements here that I have on my system but there you go that is what Photoshop elements plugin is all about the Photoshop elements plus plugin right there thank you for watching my video I hope you found it useful if you like this video click on the like button below to let others know you can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future I'm frequently uploading new training videos don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com you can share this video with your friends and co-workers just click on share and then click on the social media buttons feel free to comment on my videos I try to answer all comments as quickly as I can